Right, our discussion remains critically important on trigonometry, but we begin by looking at trigonometric ratios. As we know that there are three important trigonometric ratios in the curriculum. Right, sine is one of them. What, are, what, is, the, what is the other trigonometric uh, ratio that you can remember? If it's not sine, then what is the next trigonometric ratio? There is cos and yes, there is tangent. Cosine. And there is tangent, tangent, T, okay, tangent. Okay, right, so we have the following. We have what you call the sign. Okay, this is not sin because there's an E, so it's sign. Some people make a mistake and claim it is sin, like a biblical sin for a wrongdoing, but it is not. Okay, and then there's another one called cosine. What is the difference between sine and cosine? Well, it's because cosine has co uh, before the sign. So it's cosine. And then now there's another one we call the tangent. Right, so we remember that these functions are written as follows. This one is normally written as the sine of theta. This one is written as cosine theta. This one is written as the tangent of theta. Okay, so this... Uh, the uh, three basic trigonometric uh, ratios. But in mathematics in general, you will learn that you can take the reciprocal of the sine and it becomes uh, something we call the cosecant. Like that. If you take the reciprocal of the cosine, you get the secant of theta. If you take the reciprocal of the tangent, it becomes the cotangent of theta. Okay, so uh, they are basic, they are, they are six, therefore, but uh, now in the current curriculum, it is popular that we emphasize the three in the schools. Okay, so yeah, we note this here. Okay. If the sine of x is minus five over 13 and uh, the angle theta lies between 90 degrees and 270, we must be able to calculate the tangent squared times the cosine squared without using a calculator or a computer. So something to note here. First things first, uh, you need to draw a diagram. So to draw a diagram, you need to note that you have been given the sign of x, which is minus five out of 13, but it's not the only piece of information the examiner gave, but they also gave this information here. Right. Now, what do we do with this? We need to draw a diagram. How do we draw the diagram? Okay, in drawing the diagram, we draw a vertical line and we draw a horizontal line. And uh, we need to recall the 90 degrees, uh, 0, 90, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, but also remember the 360 degrees. So note these things. Now, um, we have the following. Okay. At this point, what more do we then need to realize? Okay, we need to remember the cast. The cast rule, cos, the C stands for cosine, the sine, and then the tangent. So there are a couple of things you need to remember here. Okay, so, Cosine theta, and this is the sine of theta, and this is the tangent of theta. Okay. We need to look for the quadrant in which the sine is negative. In each quadrant, is it negative? So the A stands for all positive. All trig functions are positive. 
all trigonometric functions are positive in this quadrant. But also, I want us to note uh, the fact that this one is the first quadrant. This one is the second quadrant, the third, and this one is the fourth quadrant. Okay, now, the quadrant means obvious is a part of the four divisions of the Cartesian plane. Right, so now let us co continue here and see what we get. Okay. Now, we need to draw this a small triangle in the right quadrant where the sign is negative. Um, so the sign is negative in the third and the fourth quadrants because here the sign is positive, but here in the first, all trigonometric functions are positive, and therefore we must draw in the um in n of these quadrants. But it must be a quadrant which x lies between um x is bigger than 90 degrees, but it's smaller than 270. So or in other words, bigger than 90 degrees, because here you're moving from 90 to 180. So you are in the second quadrant, more than 90 degrees, you are in the second quadrant, but also less than 270, 270 is this one less than, so you're somewhere here, you are between 270 and 180. So you are somewhere there, and that puts you in the third quadrant. So uh, the quadrant in which the sign is negative is therefore the third one. Okay, good. And be excited about this. And uh, we're gonna just uh, do a small decoration and uh, we're going to do a construction, okay? So we construct here a triangle, like so. We construct here a triangle like so, and this triangle is right-angled, okay? It's a right-angled triangle, and uh, we note a couple of things that we need to draw here. The angle there, X. All angles are measured from the positive real axis uh, from the zero degree line, zero degree ray. Okay, good. We excited about this, but we have a couple of things to realize that uh, we must remember that we use SOAR, CA, so well, meaning right, the sign is opposite of hypotenuse. And if you have X here, you have the opposite. And uh, the opposite is uh, opposite the X is five can put five here or minus, good. Right, okay. And it's opposite of hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is this one, which is 13. Okay, we're excited. And this is good news for us, okay. Now, a couple of things then remain uh, critically important, but it is to look at these and reason together. And reason together, okay. So, um, what else do we know? We need to know that we can get one of these. We can get the adjacent side because we have two sides here. So this is like our R in terms of uh, the convention we use. The vertical one is like, um, is parallel to the y-axis and therefore it is y goals. And this horizontal one here is uh, actually our x, okay? Okay, okay, it's x, but it's different from the angle x, please, okay? it's. It's the side of this triangle here. And I can see the role of X appearing in two places, but yeah, you know, it must be treated with utmost caution. Okay, so the examiners do this sometimes. They um, let the variables play around. Okay, let us uh, let us uh, actually continue with uh, these particular problems and uh, um, analyze these together. Okay, we proceed as follows. Right, so we remember there is what you call Pythagoras theorem. We must get this side here. So to get this side, we use Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras says eight x squared plus y squared. X squared plus y squared is r squared. Okay, we plug in the y, which is minus five. We plug in the r, which is thirteen. So we therefore have x squared plus what is the y is minus five. We square that. The r is thirteen. Similarly, we square this. Our objective is to find x, and therefore uh, 13 squared is 169 minus 25 from the minus 5 squared. Okay, so what do we obtain out of these? So we have, therefore, that x squared is 169 minus 25. What is 169? Minus 25. What do you think, Tando? All right, it's 144. 
And therefore, if you want to get the answer to this, we proceed as follows. We then say that this is 144. We apply the square root and we put a plus or minus. We also apply the square root here so that we have x squared equals, in particular, we have only just x because the square root removes the square okay, from the x. And therefore, we have the square root of 144, which is only 12. Okay, so x is plus or minus 12. So we have therefore that x is 12, but it is the negative one because it is negative 12 because it is on the left side of the origin. And uh, now it means uh, we conclude we must choose only one result. So we choose only minus 12. Why only minus 12? Because we are dealing with the left arm, the left arm of the x-axis. Okay, good. Now we are excited about this. The this diagram, also called the Argand diagram, is has been drawn. Argand diagram. Right. Um, this diagram, also called the Argand diagram, has been drawn for us. Okay, good. So we are excited about this and we proceed. Okay. The Cartesian plane. Cartesian plane is also another name of this particular diagram. Uh, right, so two-dimensional plane, we have that. Okay, good. It's called the two-dimensional plane because uh, we have uh, actually um, the x-axis and the y-axis, and therefore it has two dimensions. Okay, um, the x-dimension and the y-dimension. Okay, right, now... What else do we need to have here? Okay, good. We are excited right now. So we have our wonderful triangle here. Now with this information, the examiner, we need to remember what you need to get. Uh, we have 10 squared X times uh, cosine squared X. But we remember our old friend, uh, the mnemonic, the mnemonic technique to remember so we have uh, the tangent. So the tangent is opposite of adjacent. Opposite of adjacent. Tower, tower. Opposite of adjacent, we get back to the, the diagram. And we then say, okay, if we're dealing with the opposite, opposite the angle is minus 5, the adjacent is minus 12. Opposite, okay, this is the opposite side because this is like the angle x here. So the opposite side is minus 5. The adjacent is the other side, which is minus 12. So if you say opposite of adjacent, we have oh, the, from the tower opposite of adjacent, which is minus 5 over minus 12. Good. Right. So we have minus 5 out of minus 12. What do we do with this? We put a big square, like the square on the tangent. And therefore, now we have also the cosine square of x. What is the cosine? Right. The cosine of x is this one. And we're dealing with the adjacent of hypotenuse. Adjacent is minus 12. Hypotenuse is 13. Adjacent is minus 12, hypotenuse is 13. Right, so adjacent is minus 12, hypotenuse, because adjacent of hypotenuse, hypotenuse is 13, and this is squared. Okay. Right, we are in business. And if we square this, okay, the negative cancels the negative, and if you square 5, you get a 25. You square 12, you get a 144. You square minus 12, you get a plus 144. Divided by 13 squared is 169. Now we have 144 divided 144, giving us a 25 out of 169. Okay, so the 25 is 5 squared, this is 13 squared. These are relatively prime, relatively prime to each other, and there is no other divisor that can help us simplify this and we are done so just note that tando note that tando so these remain extremely important now the certain things uh, that i want us to remember let us look at some um identities that uh, uh, must be remembered so trigonometric identities right looking at the trigonometric Trigonometric identities. What are the trigonometric identities of choice? There's something we call the quotient identity. 
right? Quotient identity. And so there's something that we call the squares identity. Right, squares identity. Okay, uh, these things will uh, will be available will be availed to you. Um, um, the video will be posted to you. Okay, right. So, what is the quotient identity? The quotient identity, which I look, we shall look at the proof of this, but the tangent of theta is the sine of theta divided by cosine theta. Tangent of theta is sine theta over cosine theta. The square's identity is the fact that if you have the sine square of theta plus cosine squared theta, the result is always one. Sine squared plus cosine squared theta, always one. Take note of that. These remain extremely important. And we shall look at lots of identities for us to play with, so stay tuned. Okay. And so this here will actually prove very, very profitable, so we are very thrilled to deal with this. Okay, here are some problems that we can solve. Let's look at these questions. Right, we need to learn how to simplify. Right, simplify number one. Sign x, 10x, cosine x. Number two, 10x times sine squared of x plus 10x times cosine squared of x. Let's look at the solutions to this. Right, we proceed to look at the solutions to this. What are the solutions to this? Sorry, if we have, for example, sine x times 10x times cosine x, how do we simplify these? So we proceed to simplify these. Number one. The examiner decided to give us the trigonometric sine of x times the tangent of x times cosine x, which is, what is this? This is sine x. What is the tangent of x? We know the uh, quotient identity. What is the quotient identity? Right, so the quotient identity tells us something important, that uh, the tangent is the sine over the cosine of theta. Okay, so we have that. So this is the sine of x over cosine x times cosine x. So this one cancels. And then we have sine times sine and sine times sine becomes sine squared of x. Okay, so this is the answer. And there's no further simplification that is possible for this. So uh, we leave it at this point. Just something to note for us. Okay, but number two is just very straightforward, but very important. Number two, I'm giving it to you. So please pay specific attention and give it your all your strength. Give it all your strength. Now, tangent of x times sine squared plus the tangent of x multiplied by cosine squared x. What is the answer to this? Right. What do you think? What should we do here uh, to simplify these, Pando? What do you think? What do you think, Tando? Too difficult. Right, the, the tangent of x is a common factor. Is the highest common factor, so that now you have the tangent of x that appears in two places. It appears here, but it also appears there. So you pull out the tangent of x, and if you do so, you're going to be left with whatever appears. 
Right, so you're left with the sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. And then now at this point, you have the following. What is sine squared plus cosine squared? The result is a 1. And therefore, tangent uh, of x by 1 is the tangent of x, and that is the result. That is the result. So uh, we're good. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Number three. Right, you need to simplify this if you're given the following. If you're given sine squared. Sine squared x multiplied by cosine x plus cosine cubed of x. You divide these by cosine x. And at this point, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to simplify this. You need to simplify this. And let us see how to simplify this. Let us see how to simplify this. How do we simplify this? So look at the solution to this. Right, we look at the solution to this. So now, if we have to simplify this, I'm giving it to you. Um, uh, guys, anyone, what do we do here to simplify this here? So we are given the sine squared x times uh, cosine x plus cosine cubed of x, and uh, this is divided by cosine x equals. What do we do here, and how do we simplify these? What do we do here, and how do we simplify these? Anyone, please, quickly. Okay, by merely looking at this, there's something one can see, but you can see that there is cosine in two places, so you can see the appearance of the cosine here, and uh, the cosine as well appears here. So with that, then it means that we can factor out cosine x. So cosine x, a common factor, it will factor out cosine x. You are left with the trigonometric sine squared of x plus, okay? If you factor out cosine, there's cosine cubed, okay? If you have the cosine cubed, then you factor out one factor, of cosine, so you're going to be left with cosine squared of x. You divide the whole thing by cosine x. <laughs> okay, divide these things. And we have sine squared plus cosine squared. What is sine squared plus cosine squared? Okay, sine squared plus cosine squared is a 1. Right, so, and that is the answer. So this whole giant expression is equivalent to 1. And we've simplified it. We have simplified it. Any question? So, any question? Okay. Okay. Let's look at the next question, guys. Number four. Okay, if any, yeah, you 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 might not have enough time to always copy, but the video is gonna be available. Okay, so you're gonna watch the video. So you're gonna have the video, and you know, when you have the video, then you can copy everything. Let's look at this one. What about if you have we give you sign x plus Cosine x, you divide everything by sine squared x minus cosine squared x, and we have a square v, like so. Okay, good. Now we have this, but what then we do here? Right, this is an exercise, so we need to simplify this. How do we simplify this? How do we simplify this? How do we simplify this? Anyone? 
I think we expand the bracket. Yes, we expand the numerator. Right, and so we present a solution to this. Right, so in presenting a solution to this, we expand the numerator by opening up the brackets or the parentheses. So we have sine x plus cosine x squared. We divide everything by sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Okay, if we expand this because it's being squared, we write the following. So we're gonna have sine squared. We're gonna have sine squared x. So we just square the sine, and the next thing is we multiply sine x by cosine x by two. We multiply sine x by cosine x by two, getting two sine x by cosine x plus cosine squared x. We divide by sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Okay. What do we do next uh, here? Anyone? Hmm. What do we do next at this point? Anyone, please? Your input? Okay, so we have the sine squared x plus twice sine x times cosine x plus cosine squared x. We divide by sine squared x minus cosine squared x. Okay, I was asking the question, what do we do here? Tando and Yolando, anyone? We should factorize. We can do the division. Okay, we can group, we can group um, like terms. Sine squared plus cosine squared, we group. Sine squared and cosine squared. Then we have two sine x times uh, cosine x. We divide by sine squared minus cosine squared. What is sine squared plus cosine squared? What is it equal to? Anyone? One. One. Well done. That is the squares identity, Pythagorean identity. So this is a one uh, divided by uh, or added first to two sine x times cosine x and we divide everything by the sine squared minus um, cosine squared, okay? And therefore, what do we know about this, for example? Right, and what do we know about any of these here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do we know about any of this? So we have in the denominator sine squared x minus cosine squared x. What is sine squared x minus cosine squared x? Okay, the difference of two squares. So, which is exactly sine x minus cosine x, sine x plus cosine x, which is what the examiner wanted. So, one thing that we can realize is what the examiner wanted here. So, I would like us to make a modification here and realize that this numerator here can be written still as sine x cosine x squared. So we can leave it this way so that we still have here sine x 
plus cosine x squared. Okay, now with this in mind, I would like us to transform this numerator and keep it as it was, okay, in terms of the square. All right, it can be expanded, but we can keep it into, with its square to just uh, make sure that we are brief. So we have here with us, sine x plus cosine x squared, sine x plus cosine x squared. Okay, so obviously if you look at these and you divide, you know? right, so the sine x plus cosine x cancels one of the factors here and we are able to get it. So at this point, I would just say it's best to leave this. You can open up the brackets, yes. But uh, we have seen the factorization that it actually simplifies things with ease to just um, keep the top like that, keep the bottom this way. And when you get to this point, you still have that. And uh, you can reduce some of the steps here, like you can cut out this step just to make sure the solution is very nice and short of this. And obviously you can see that you can cut out a couple of the steps, like this step, you can actually cut it out. So that now, how many steps will that be? So this is uh, the step we have. So in particular, maybe we can shorten these as follows. Okay, because this is already the answer, but I'll just think that, let me just write a very brief solution to this and say that um, the top, you can open up the brackets, yes, but you can write it with the parenthesis like this. And uh, you then can just factorize the bottom sine x minus cosine x um, into, sine x plus cosine x. Right, and upon this, uh, like you saw on the previous uh, page, so what you have is that this cancels one of the factors so that you have sine x plus cosine x over, um, you, you, so in other words, sine x plus cosine x is gonna cancel one of the two factors, giving us sine x plus cosine x in the numerator, and that is gonna become exactly, um, sine x plus cosine x divided by sine x minus cosine x. Okay, and I found that I think that uh, this is a much smarter solution. And so, so you can just be in a position to have fewer steps that are very important for us to consider. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so you have this. So you cancel them out and then you have this. Okay, so what is the answer? And this obviously remains as the answer to quiz three. There are many ways to write this, but yeah, okay. So we started with this, square it here. Now you have the square there, keep it as it is. Difference of two squares here, so you can factorize the denominator and write sine, sine x minus cosine x into sine x plus cosine x. So you can see the sine x plus cosine x cancels one of the factors in the numerator, leaving us with the sine x plus cosine x in the numerator and with sine x minus cosine x in the denominator. This here is the answer to the question. You can just leave it like that, okay? Let's look at the next question, please. Right, so we must also learn to complete. Let's just complete a couple of things. Right, let us complete. Right, if you need to complete one minus sine squared x is equal to what? Okay, and then now the next one is uh, you need to simplify. One minus sine squared theta or x. divided by cosine x 
Yeah, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, Tando. Let's complete this. One minus sine squared. Tando or Yolanda. What is one minus sine squared? What can we put here if they say complete? What do we put here? If the examiner is to say complete, what do we put here? What is one minus sine squared equal to? Anyone? I think it's one plus sine x into one minus sine x. Oh, yes. Okay, you're right. So you can factorize that. But what the examiner, so you're looking at difference of two squares. So you are right, you're right. I mean, it's correct. But now you need to remember that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to what? It's equal to one. So you can transpose the sine so that cosine squared is one minus sine squared. So wherever you see one minus sine squared, because you transpose the one minus sine squared. So one minus sine squared is what? It's cosine squared. What is one minus sine squared? Cosine squared. Divided by cosine x. What is cosine x now? Cosine squared x divided by cosine x. Okay, we'll just simplify. I'm trying to simplify here. So cosine squared x divided by cosine x is just cosine x. So these are the answers. So whenever you see one minus sine squared, it is equal to cosine squared because of this identity. And this is also called the Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity. Okay, let's complete this one. Complete. One minus cosine squared x is equal to what? Can you fill in? Anyone? 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 I think it's uh, sine x, sine squared x. It is sine squared x. It is sine squared x because we work it out from sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. Store. You can transpose the cosine squared so that sine squared x is one minus cosine squared. Okay, what is one minus cosine squared? It's sine squared. Okay, so yeah. All right. Let's look at this one. Here you need to prove. Right, you need to prove that. Sine x times cosine x. Divided by one plus. Minus sine squared. Which is one half 10 x. You need to prove this. So how do we prove this? How? Anyone? So we present the proof. Here I'm gonna let the left hand side. Take the left, because you take the most complicated side and simplify it. So you're gonna take the left hand side because it's more complex, it has more terms. So we have side x times cosine x and you divide everything by one plus cosine squared minus sine squared. Okay. What do we do here, anyone? How to simplify this?
How do you simplify? Okay, it's very straightforward because in the numerator you have sine, cosine. In the denominator, you can you can just group the terms. So this is cosine squared, then you put one minus sine squared. What is one minus sine squared? We completed before one minus sine squared is cosine squared. So this is cosine squared. The one minus sine squared is cosine squared, and you have sine x times cosine x. So what you're having therefore is that the left hand side. is sine x cosine x divided by okay sine x times cosine x divided by okay here you're gonna have this one it's a plus one. so this is cosine squared we have one minus sine squared is cosine squared so cosine squared x plus cosine squared x is two cosine squared x so the left hand side is okay cosine divides so you have cosine squared, then cosine is going to remove one from the square, and therefore you have sine x divided by two cosine x. So sine of a cosine is what? There's one half and one half from the two in the denominator, and you have cosine x, and this is. The tangent of x, which is the right hand side, which is the right hand side. Okay, so this is what we get. So, in other words, hence, hence, if ever you see, if you, if you happen to see sine x times cosine x, and you divide it by one plus cosine squared minus sine squared. This is one half 10 X. One half 10 X. So we're proving that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Okay, now let's look at the next question. Let's look more at reduction formulae. Right, reduction. Formulae. Let's look more at reduction formulae and see what we can get. Now, the reduction formulae themselves remain critically important to us. And let's see what we can do to um, master problems that involve reduction formulae. The questions will normally say simplify. The questions will ordinarily say simplify. What are we simplifying? What are we attempting to simplify here? Right, here's the question we need to simplify. So we need to simplify the sine of 180 degrees plus theta multiplied by the sine of 360 degrees minus theta minus cosine of 180 degrees minus theta times the cosine of minus theta. So how do we simplify this, anyone? 
So we'll look at the solution to this. So to simplify this, we proceed by looking at the sine of 180 degrees plus theta times the sine of 360 degrees minus theta minus the cosine of 180 degrees minus theta into the cosine of minus theta. Okay, now, a couple of things are very important is to look at the cast diagram. Right, this is the cast diagram. And Ninety one eighty degrees, two seventy three sixty degrees. So now at this point, what we have is so this one is going to be ninety degrees plus theta, ninety degrees minus theta, one eighty degrees plus theta. 180 degrees minus theta. 360, this one is gonna be 360 degrees minus theta. Okay, so this is gonna be 360 minus theta. Just write it clear here. Three hundred and sixty degrees minus theta. But also we need to remember a couple of things and know our knowledge of the fact that this one is the first quadrant, the second, the third, and the fourth quadrant. So that's something that's extremely important to note. Okay, so just note that. Right, with that said, then we look and analyze uh, this and get the answer. In which quadrant is 180 plus? 180 plus is in the third quadrant where 10, because according to the cast diagram, cast diagram, 10 is positive in the third quadrant. And therefore, the sign, because we have sine of 180 plus, sign is negative. Okay, so we have 360 minus in the fourth quadrant where the sign is negative. 180 minus is in the second quadrant where the cosine is negative. Okay, this is theta. Okay, good, let's continue. So what you have here is that we have minus sine theta into minus sine theta. Minus sine theta into minus sine theta. Then obviously now you have this, which is minus into minus cosine theta, cosine theta. Minus into minus cosine theta, cosine theta. What is negative by negative? It's positive. Sine by sine is sine squared theta plus, okay, negative by negative is plus cosine squared theta. What is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, anyone? It is one. It is one, well done. Right, and look at reduction formulae. Right, a look at reduction formulae. Okay, let's look at the cast diagram. Right, in view of the cast diagram, we know that this one is cosine theta. Take of theta, sine theta, all positive. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Okay, so we continue.
So now what we have here. Okay, so here we have 90 degrees minus theta. Okay, so if you have this, then now you want to go back to um to the first quadrant because then you use 90 minus, but to move here, you have 90 degrees plus, but you also have 180 degrees minus. Okay, if you're here, 180, you're moving towards 270 is 180 degrees plus to move towards 270. But if you're 270, you want to go back, you reduce 270, enhance the reduction from the leave, subtract uh, theta. Okay, good, let's continue quickly. I uh, want us to look at this diagram and make sense of it. But I'm going to engage you a lot here uh, because I want us to look at the basics because some of you might have not quite covered the basics in school yet. So let's just look at this, uh, but let's look at this very carefully. So we have 360 degrees minus theta. Two, yeah, 270 degrees plus theta. Okay, you see, the thing is, if you're 270, you want to move towards 360. Okay, these are like positive angles. So we're going to look at another cast diagram for the negative angles. Okay, so now looking at the positive angle, you're saying if you have 270, you want to move towards 360. So uh, what are you going to do? You're going to say 270 plus theta to move towards 360. If you're 360, you want to go back. You say 360 minus and reduction for melee. Okay, now... Let us play around a little bit more. This one is the first quadrant. This one is the second quadrant. This is the third quadrant. And that is the fourth quadrant. One, two, three, four. So let us play here a little bit together. So here you need to complete. So we're playing the game of completion. Um, there, Tandor and Yolande, we are playing the game of completion. So we need to complete the things. Um, okay, so let's look at the first one. We can give you the sign of 180 degrees minus theta. What is the answer? Number two, the cosine of 360 degrees minus theta. The tangent of 180 degrees minus theta. Number four, the the sine of um, 90 degrees minus theta. All right, so let's play here. The game here is the game of completion. When I around lots of functions here. Uh, all right, so if you have 180 degrees minus, in which quadrant is 180 degrees minus? 180 degrees minus is in the second quadrant because when you're at 180 degrees here and you want to go back to 90, you must minus from 180. So 180 minus something takes you back to the second quadrant. So that in the second quadrant, the sign is the only one that is positive. So that um, obviously the result here is going to be positive, the sign of theta. It's going to be positive the sine of theta. The next one, what is the cosine of 360 minus theta? Um, um, Tando? Okay, let's do it together. Okay, now to, to find the answer to 360 minus theta, what you need to do is to look at, you need to memorize this cast diagram. Because if you are at 360 degrees, at the 360 degree ray here, and now you want to go back to 270, you say 360 minus theta, and that puts you back in quadrant four. And these are quadrants. Quadrants. Okay, so. Now, at this point, 
If you turn to the fourth quadrant, this is the minus is in the fourth quadrant, and the cosine is the only one that is positive there. So the answer is just going to be positive cosine. So you just copy cosine and the theta. Let's look at 180 minus theta, and when in this quadrant is that one, it is in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, the sign is the only one that is positive. And therefore, if you have 180 minus, it is the second quadrant that you are uh, dealing with. And therefore, the tangent that appears here is going to be negative. So you write negative like this, and you copy tan and theta. So you have the tangent of theta. Anyone, what is the sign of, okay, this one you can't get yet. Okay, if you're looking at the sign of 90 degrees minus theta, it's in the first quadrant, 90 degrees minus theta is in the first quadrant where all the functions are positive, so the answer is going to be positive. But at 90 degrees and 270, you apply co-functions co and there's something we call the COCO, COCO rule. Something called the coco rule. Coco rule means that if there's no co, you put on a co. Okay, the sign you put on a co on the sign, and put on putting on a co on the sign, it becomes cosine theta. Cosine theta. So sine changes to cosine at ninety degrees and to seventy. Okay, let us practice a little bit more. Now we're gonna do changes here. Okay, let's do something here. Like, let me put cosine here. So I'm also gonna change the results here. Okay, now if I give you um, cosine here, and I put 10 here, and uh, we put um, ten here, and you put whole side here. Okay, yeah, this one, the first one. Okay, what is cosine of 180 degrees minus theta? Anyone? Tando, Yolande, anyone? It's going to be cosine theta. Please come again. Yolande alone, maybe, I don't know. Okay, because speaking at the same time. So, yeah. Okay, Yolande first. Negative cosine theta. Well done. Okay, that's correct. Negative cosine theta because you need to look at the fact that 180 minus is in quadrant two. There's 180 minus in, in quadrant two, and therefore, um, but the sign is the only one that is positive, so the cosine is going to be negative. Cosine is going to be negative, and then you copy cosine and the theta. Like this. Okay, anyone? The second one? The second one is the tangent of 360 degrees minus theta. Either Tando or Yolande, anyone? But yeah, Tando would be the ideal candidate because I know that you tried to give me the same the, the answer at the same time with Yolande, and now I was I could absolutely get whose answer was the most correct, etc. So yeah. Okay. Now number two, anyone, please. It's going to be negative 10 theta. Negative. Well done. Okay, well done. Because 360 minus is in the fourth quadrant, and 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant, and the cosine is the only one that is positive there. So the 10 is negative. Tangent is negative, and you copy tangent and the theta. Okay, this one here, number three, anyone? Negative 10 theta. <laughs> well done, Yolande. Negative 10 theta. Okay, it's negative 10 theta because 180 minus is in the second quadrant and the sign is only one positive there, so the tangent is negative there. 
tangent is negative, so it, you write a negative and you copy tangent and the theta. What about cosine of one eighth degree uh, of uh, cosine of what? Of 90 minus theta? Cosine of 90 minus theta, anyone? What's the answer? It's going to be cos theta. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine, Tando. What do you think you're landing? Um, cosine theta. Tando said cosine theta. What does Yolande think? Maybe a uh, sine theta. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm happy that you guys are good stars. Okay, now I want to mention something before I write the answer here. Okay, here if you are at 360 degrees and you want to go higher, so you can increase 360 degrees by adding theta to 360. So 360 plus is also in quadrant one. So now 90 degrees minus theta is in quadrant one where all functions are positive, all positive at 90 minus theta. So the answer is going to be positive. But when we, as I said already, um, the COCO rule, COCO rule applies at 90 degrees and 270. So which means therefore, um, at this point, what you're going to have is the following COCO rule. If there's a co, you remove the co. So you have cosine. And you remove the co and you're left with what? Sine. So it becomes only sine. Theater. So in other words, at 90 degrees, if there's a co, you remove the co. If there's no co, you put on the co. Let us play around with more problems here. Let's do more of this. Okay, this time around, I'm going to erase. I'm going to clean up. And I'm going to clean up. Okay, so I'm going to clean up. Okay, so now at this point, if we have the following, so we're going to have lots of 90s and 270s. Okay, let's just put a 270 as well. So if you put a 270 degrees here and you put cosine. Okay, so we're gonna put a cosine here. And 180 degrees minus, you're gonna put something else. Right, at 180 degrees minus, what can you put? Okay, so, um, let's put the cosine again. Okay, I'm gonna change this one. Right, so, okay, I'm gonna change this one and put 360. Right, so if I have 360 minus, then I can put, Cosine, let's put sine. And then here, we're gonna change this one at 180 degrees minus. Um, you can put another cosine here. And at 90 degrees, we can put, let's, put, let's make this one 90 degrees plus and we put cosine. Okay, now let's look at Anyone, the first one, 360 minus theta, sine. What's the answer? Minus negative sine theta. Okay, well done. Because 360 degrees minus theta, 360 degrees minus theta is in the fourth quadrant. Then the fourth quadrant, um, only cosine is positive and therefore the sine is negative. So the sine, the result is going to be negative. Negative, and therefore you have the sine of theta. Okay, now let's look at number two, for example. Cosine of 270 degrees minus theta. What's the answer, Tando? I've heard answers from Yolande, but yeah, Tando, I need to give Tando a chance. It's not fair to have Yolande alone. 
Okay, I know that this, uh, there's, there's another student called Tenulo. I'm sure that Tenulo has joined us, so I'm going to have Tenulo as well from time to time participating. Okay, we're doing this one now. If somebody's wondering, I've written so many things on the screen. Uh, right, there's, we're doing this one. We're doing number two. Cosine of 270 degrees minus theta is equal to what? This is the question you're asking. It's equal to what? Number two. I know that we have not seen these quite yet um, turned out, but what do you think? It's going to be negative cos theta. Okay, good. That's fine. Let's analyze it together. Okay, you now we're dealing with 270 minus. In which quadrant first, you must first identify the quadrant um, that you're dealing with or the quadrant you are in. So 270 degrees minus theta is in quadrant three. Okay. And which functions are positive in quadrant three? It's only 10. So, which means, therefore, the cosine is going to be negative there. Cosine is going to be negative there, so it's going to be negative. Uh, therefore, but at, at, at 270 degrees and 90 degrees, there are function changes, co-function changes. The co-co rule applies. So, co-co rule is going to come and say, cosine has a co, cosine has a co. You remove the co. It left with the sign. So the answer becomes negative the sign of theta. Right. So the next one is number three. Senulo, what do you think? Number three, cosine of 180 degrees minus theta. Senulo, what do you think? Uh I think it's gonna be negative cos theta. Okay, that's an interesting point. Okay, I'm having parallel as well. Right, so now uh, if you're dealing with 180 degrees minus theta, so 180 degrees minus theta is in the second quadrant where only the sign is positive and therefore the cosine is negative and you just copy cosine and theta. So it's negative cosine and theta. Okay, now let's look at this one here. 90 degrees plus theta in each quadrant is it? 90 degrees plus theta in each quadrant is it? The first quadrant. Okay, let's check. 90 degrees plus the theta. Second. It is the second quadrant. Well done. 90 degrees plus theta is in the second quadrant. So if 90 degrees plus theta is in the second quadrant, then what functions are positive in the second quadrant? It's only sine theta. It's only sine theta. So cosine is going to be what? Negative. But there's a co function change. There's a co-function change. So we're doing co-function changes at 90 degrees plus in the second quadrant. Um, there's a co-function change. So if you have cosine, you remove the co by the coco rule. You remove the co and you're left with the sine, and that becomes the sine of the sine of theta. Okay. We're doing more reduction formulae, so stay tuned because we're going to be playing, playing the game. So this is an exciting board game, but it's a game of the reduction formulae um, in trigonometry, bringing together learners, but also allowing us to explore this a little bit more. Okay, we are mastering trigonometry from beginning to end. Right, but now I'm gonna make changes. Okay, this is recorded, guys. So don't worry if you do not copy something. You're gonna have a chance to watch this video again. You can pause the video and copy your notes. Okay, obviously these notes must be copied down to make sure that you follow exactly what is happening. So yeah, I'm just making sure that we play more today. Right. Now, let, let's deal with uh, this one here. Here you can have 90 degrees minus theta. And let's put 90 degrees plus theta and put um, let's make it 270. Right. Let's make it 270 degrees. Minus theta. Okay, make it minus here. And then you put, um, okay, I'm just formulating these questions for us to practice. We have this. And then now the second one here is going to be uh, like 
360 degrees minus, it's okay. And then we can put 10. And then now here you have 90 degrees plus, can you put the cosine, it's okay. And then now this one is gonna be 180 degrees plus, and we can put the big sign. Okay, let's just do this. Right, number one, anyone? If you're dealing with cosine of 270 degrees minus theta, what is it gonna be? What is the answer? Negative cos theta. Okay, negative cosine theta. Is that your landing? Yes. Okay, that's awesome. That's fine. Okay. Um, why do you think the answer is negative cosine theta, your landing? Um, because cos is positive at question four, not question three. Okay. That's 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 interesting. Okay, now let's first look. Okay, first things first, we need to look at where 270 minus theta lies. In which quadrant is 270 minus theta? It's in quadrant three. It is in quadrant three, and in quadrant three, only the tangent is positive, so the cosine is going to be negative, so it's going to be negative. But because we're dealing with 270, the COCO rule applies, and therefore uh, you are dealing with the cosine. So you remove the co and you're gonna be left with the sign. You're removing the co, you're gonna be left in, be left with the sign. So it's gonna be negative, but it's gonna to change to the sign of theta. Anyone number two, the tangent of 360 degrees minus theta. The tangent of 360 degrees minus theta. What is the answer? What is the answer? Anyone? Negative 10 theta. Okay, well done, because you're dealing with 360 minus. So dealing with 60, 360 minus is in the fourth quadrant where the cosine is positive, and therefore, um, obviously, now um, 360 minus, only cosine is positive, the tangent is going to be negative. And therefore, just copy 10 and theta, and you leave out the 360. Right, if you're dealing with 90 degrees plus theta cosine, what's the answer? Cosine of 90 degrees plus theta, what is the answer? Okay, anyone? Right, this is being recorded. So guys, you're gonna play around this video. You can watch and watch and watch a hundred times. So don't stress if you cannot copy everything now. Um, okay, we're dealing with 90 degrees plus theta. Okay, 90 degrees plus theta in which quadrant is it? Okay, 90 degrees plus theta is in the second quadrant. It's in quadrant two. The only sign is positive, and therefore cosine is going to be negative. But we need to remember that at 90 degrees, the function must change to the corresponding co function. You have cosine, and you must remove the co below with sine, so that's going to be sine theta. So 180 degrees plus theta in which quadrant is it? 180 degrees plus theta in which quadrant is it? It's in the third quadrant, where the tangent is the only one that's positive, and therefore the sine is negative. OK, what's the answer number four, anyway? Negative sine theta. Negative sine theta. Negative sine theta. Okay, let's take, let's continue and look at other things because we can't just be bored like this. We can't just be bored like this. So let us practice and do some simplifications. Uh, let's do a couple of proofs. Prove that. Prove. Let's look at some proofs. Let's prove something. Prove the following.
Number one. Side x plus cosine x is equal to one plus two side x cosine x. Then we're going to do number two as well. Sine to the fourth power of theta minus cosine to the fourth power of theta is one minus two cosine squared of theta. Two cosine squared of theta. Let's look at the solution to this. Okay, let's uh, look at this very carefully. Okay, how do we prove the first one, guys? Tando? Mm. What do we do? What can we do to prove the first one? How do we prove the first one? Senolo? Okay, now we have the signs, the sign of X. So, Pehalelo, please think about this. Right, so if this is one plus two sine X, cosine X, how do we prove this? How? Where do we start? Anyone? Yolande, you know this. Okay, take the left-hand side. Or you can take the right, but you start with one side and produce the other side. So uh, personally, I'm just choosing the left. All squared. The left hand side equals. Okay, to square this now, you first square the sign and become sine squared. Then you have sine x times sine x times 2, which is 2 sine x. Cosine x plus you square the sine, the cosine. The left hand side, so. Now you can group uh, like terms together, obtaining sine squared plus cosine squared x plus two sine x cosine x. Okay, so we have the left hand side. What is sine squared x plus cosine squared x? It is one plus two sine x cosine x. And therefore, this is equal to the right hand side. This is exactly the right hand side. So now the left is equal to the right hand side, and we have proven this identity. Now let us look at more proofs, but more proofs. We need to prove number two. Sine to the fourth power of theta minus cosine to the fourth power of theta is equal to one minus cosine square of theta. How do we prove this? Anyone? Right, I hope you're not sleeping. Number two, you have this sine to the fourth power minus 
cosine to the fourth power is one minus two cosine squared. Okay, to prove this, you take one side and produce the other. The easiest is to take the most complicated side with a lot of higher powers and more terms. Uh, and in this case, you take sine to the fourth power, cosine to the fourth power. So, which means the left hand side. Okay, this is like it's it's biquadratic, biquadratic. So, which means that it's like a difference of two squares, but you can write it like so. You can write it like so. Okay, there's a theta there. Okay. So this is theta. So there's two, 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 which is the four. All right, different of two squares is that if you have a squared minus b squared, it's a minus b into a plus b. Sine squared theta, cosine squared theta. Sine squared theta, plus cosine squared theta, like this. Okay, let's continue. So, so we have the left-hand side. What is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? Uh, this is one. Right, but we know that sine squared can be written as one minus cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. So that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one. And therefore the left hand side is one minus two cosine squared theta, which is the right hand side. Right, so we have proven this identity in the yellow color. We've proven this identity in the yellow. Right, let's look at more problems for us to try. Let's look at this one. Simplify. Number one. Ten squared beta. Ten squared beta plus one. Let's simplify this, and then number two. One minus cosine x into one plus cosine x. Square root of this if zero degrees is less than x less than 90 degrees okay let's uh, look at this how do we prove the first one number one how do we simplify uh, the first one and anyway. one 10 squared beta over 10 squared beta plus one how do we simplify this how where do we start what do we do first what is the first step What is the first step? What is the first step? What is the first step? Are you sleeping? <laughs> Number one, guys, what is the first step of simplifying this?
What is the first step of simplifying this? Is it too hard? Tando, what do you think? I know that Tando is still learning these things. Tando, I know that Tando is saying, but I'm still very young. Oh, what do we do here, Tando? Okay, there are a couple of ways to deal with this, but one of the ways is to write these as everything in terms of sine and cosine. Sine squared beta over cosine squared beta. Sine squared beta over cosine squared beta. And once you get to this, you have the LCD problem um, here. Uh, uh, the cosine squared appears in both the numerator and the denominator. So cosine squared cancels, giving you sine squared. Okay, cosine squared now, if you multiply these cosine squared cancels out, leaving us with sine squared. Plus, then we have cosine squared plus one, which by one, which is cosine squared. Everyone knows what sine squared plus cosine squared is. Even Tando knows. What is sine squared plus cosine squared, Tando? It's a big one. And therefore, this is sine squared beta. And this is the answer. So now, 10 squared beta over 10 squared beta plus one is sine squared beta. Let us look at more proofs. This one. The examiner claims that the sine of theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta, one divided by the sine of theta times cosine theta. Plus cosine theta. And then here you have cosine theta. This is one over Cosine theta plus two sine theta. And then here it is two sine theta. How do we prove number two? We look at the solutions to this. We look at the solutions to this. We get the solutions to this. Um, right, number two, Tando, what do we do? Anyone? Okay, number two. Might have lost Tando. That's okay. Maybe there's something to do. So here, that's number one, two, number two. Sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta over 
sin theta, one over sin theta plus cosine theta. Okay, we need to prove this, then we present a solution to this. Present a solution to this. Which is sine theta over cosine theta. Cosine theta over sine theta. Here you take the LCD, lowest common denominator, you multiply the two. Cosine theta times sine theta. So you divide here, cosine theta times sine theta, divide by cosine theta, so you have sine theta, sine theta by sine theta, you get sine squared theta. Divide this one by sine theta, so that you have cosine theta times cosine theta, which is cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one over, here you can start by writing a sine theta, cosine theta. And this is equal to the right-hand side. So we just took the LCD here, and hence, if you have, if you have sine theta over cosine theta plus cosine theta, over sine theta, the result is one over sine theta cosine theta. Right, okay, this one we need to simplify. I have parallel on the line. 1 minus cosine theta, cosine theta, okay, called it x before, just, just maintain the x variable. And then into 1 plus cosine x. Okay, this if less than x, less than 90 degrees. Okay. So now you let, okay, here, to simplify this, when I show the simplification, the, the question is in white and the solution is gonna be in yellow. Right, to simplify this, you have the square root of everything here. So you're just going to have the square root. So you expand. 1 times 1. So you multiply this with that. Multiply this with that. You multiply this with that. And you multiply this with that. 1 times 1 is 1 plus 1 times cosine x is cosine x. Minus cosine x times 1 is minus cosine x. Minus cosine x times cosine x is minus cosine squared. Cosine x minus cosine x is zero. One minus cosine squared x. So that one minus cosine squared is sine squared. Okay, when the sine is, when the angle theta lies between zero and 90 degrees, you have 180 degrees here. To say 360. Okay, between now uh, zero and 90 is in the first quadrant where all are positive. All are positive, so this is going to be positive. In principle, it is the absolute value of the square root. The, the square root of the square is the absolute value. Is the absolute value of sine x or the modulus of sine x. 
And then if it is the modulus of sine x part, it then becomes positive because of the restriction. Sort of the domain restriction, because now we're in the first quadrant, so it becomes sine x because uh, the angle x Um, you have this. Next. Next. We need to simplify this one. Sine theta plus cosine theta. Divided by cosine theta. One over cosine theta. Plus two sine theta. How do you prove this one here? Um, anyone, please? What do we do? Okay, uh, obviously this one here, we might just take one of the sides, etc., and, uh, and produce, take the most complicated side. We In, in this case, it is the uh, left-hand side. So, yeah, okay. Um, okay, you need to prove here. Yeah? The instruction is you need to prove. Right, so you need to prove to this. So you're going to take the left and produce the right or anything of that sort. So you have the left hand side, which is the sine of theta, cosine of theta squared divided by cosine theta. So if you square this, it's sine squared, two sine cosine, cosine squared divided by cosine theta. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one plus two sine theta cosine theta. You divide by cosine, you divide by cosine. Cosine cancels and you have one over cosine theta, two sine theta. Right hand side. So we have proven this here as we have done. Okay, pay particular attention to the steps and as we do the next example, even if you can't copy everything, yeah, this video is being recorded. There is a, a question you need to prove. You need to prove that if you have one minus sine theta, one divided by one plus sine theta, Divided by cosine squared theta. How do you prove this, anyone? What, what is the first step? Okay, prove you take a side. Take the left. So you have one minus sine theta. So divide this one by one minus sine and you get one plus sine and multiply by one, which is one plus sine theta. You drop the plus, then you have this divided by one plus sine. You have one minus sine multiplied by one, which is one minus sine. 
Sign Tina, mana sign Tina? Zero. One times one denominator is one minus. This is like a difference of two squares. It's one times one, then you have the sign by sign and is sine squared theta. If you remember that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one, you transpose, you move the sign to the other side so that you're left with cosine squared theta, which is one minus sine squared. One minus sine squared is cosine squared. Right, two of the cosine squared is our beautiful right-hand side. So we have been able to prove this result as well. Now, I want us to spend a bit of time on reduction formulae and we shall call it a very good, good day. As part of our practice strategy and as, as part of our master strategy, we need to practice more mathematics and record our videos for you to watch all the time. Right, so we're gonna actually So we continue. So we continue. Yes, sir, I'm still here. Oh, Senator is still here. Good. <laughs> Excited, Senator. Let's look at reduction formulae. I'm looking at the reduction formulae for parallel because parallel is still learning these things and is learning them for the first time. Reduction formulae. Okay, now let's draw the, the cast. Just look at the cast rule. Right, so look at the cast rule. I want us to just discuss some reduction formulae and you call it a very good day. Uh, because I want uh, I want Pechalelo to be more familiar with this, um, the cast rule. Right. Okay, the cast rule begins with a diagram like this. Zero ninety. 180, 270, 360. Right, so in view of the cast diagram, um, we have here this 90 degrees, so this one is the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third, and then the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's... Uh, put a little bit more information here. So this one will be 90 degrees plus theta, 180 degrees minus theta. Here, if you add 180, you want to go to 270, so it becomes 180 degrees plus theta, but also if you are at 270, you want to go back to 180, it's 270 minus theta. Okay, you are here and you are at 360 degrees. You can have 360 degrees minus theta, but you can also have 270 degrees plus theta. So here, if you're here, you can have 90 degrees minus theta, which means you can also have 360 degrees plus theta. So we continue. 
So now, number one, if you have the sign of 270 degrees minus theta, what is the answer? The turn of 360 degrees minus theta, what is the answer? The turn of 180 degrees minus theta, what is the answer? The sine of 180 degrees plus theta, what is the answer? The cosine of 270 degrees minus theta, what is the answer? Okay, now let's complete this here. We start as follows. Now 270 minus theta, 270 minus theta is in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, we have 270 minus theta, but the only function that is positive in the third quadrant is the tangent function. Okay, if the tangent is the only positive function, so we can see, therefore, that the sign itself is going to be negative in the third quadrant. But at 270 degrees, something applies, and that is called the COCO, the COCO rule. So that sign has no curl, and you put on a curl, and it becomes cosine theta. Becomes cosine theta. Okay, let's look at the next one. The tangent of 360 degrees minus theta. What you got? The tangent of 360 degrees minus theta. Anyone? What's the answer? Number two. The tangent negative tan theta. Is negative tan theta. So, okay, um, theta is very correct. So if you look at 360 degrees minus theta, you're dealing with the fourth quadrant. So 360 degrees minus theta, you're dealing with the fourth quadrant where the cosine is the only one that is positive there. And therefore, the tangent is going to be negative. And because it's 360, uh, there's no cofunction change. And you co only copy the tangent and the theta. So now, if you have 180 degrees minus theta, 180 degrees minus theta in which quadrant is it? 180 degrees minus theta in which quadrant is it? So 180 degrees minus theta is in the second quadrant where the sign is the only one that is positive. And therefore, the tangent is going to be negative. And then you copy tangent and theta, like so. Okay, if you're dealing with the sine of 180 degrees plus theta, what answer do we get? What answer do we get? The, the sine of... Sign. Yes, okay, good. So now if you're dealing with the 180 degrees plus theta, 180 degrees plus theta, 180 plus theta is in the third quadrant. 180 degrees plus theta is in the third quadrant. And only the 10 is positive, And therefore, the sign here is going to be negative. And you only copy the sign and the theta. Perhalelo, you're still learning these. What do you think the answer to number five is? I know. OK. <laughs> Pella is still I, say, I think they are gone, sir. I think they're gone, eh? Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, okay. Perelo is still here. Yeah. Yes, you're still here, Perelo, right? So the Coco rule only applies when you're on the third quadrant. Yeah, the Coco rule applies at 90 and 270. Oh, okay. Applies at 90. It, it applies only when you have 90 here, 90 minus, 90 plus, or 270 minus, 270 plus. That is when the Coco rule applies. So, it is so the cocoa rule is the same yes. as 90, sir. Please so the cocoa in. rule is the same as 90. Yes, the cocoa rule is the same as 90 or 270. Okay. okay. 90, yeah, 90 or 270. But there are okay. more angles, there are more angles that are like 90 or 270, but 90 or 270 are the most basic. But the examiners normally could can go higher and higher. Over revolution. Yes, I know, sir. Over the yes. revolution. Over revolution, etc. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy that you're able to realize that because the angles that are more than 360 and you can have 450, 
Uh, and so on. Okay, we, we, we're going to look at those. But yeah, I'm looking at like 27 degrees minus theta. In which quadrant is it? What do you think, uh, uh, parallel? 27 degrees minus theta, in which quadrant is it? The third. It is in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, the only function that is positive is which one? In the third? 10. It is the 10. It is the tangent function so that the cosine is negative. Cosine is negative. And then now there is a co-function change at 90 and 270. The co-co rule applies at 90 and 270. So it's going to apply here because it's 270. And it's going to change cosine. Cosine has a co. You need to remove the co by the co-co rule. The co-co rule says if you have a co, remove the co. So if you have cosine and you remove the co, you're going to be left with what? It's going to be sine theta. It's going to be sine theta. Okay, we're just practicing because I'm I'm trying to get Pekalelo on board because Pekalelo is still learning these things, but like learning them for the first time ever. So I'm trying to make sure that I bring you on board, Pekalelo. Let's practice once more and then we're going to go to other things. But I want us to change these ones, these problems, and just change the functions and put new functions. And then see if Perlelo can be able to, with Tenulo, can be able to get, give us some correct answers. And then we're going to jump to other things. Okay. Now let's just uh, remove all these. And um, we're going to put other uh, functions here. Let's put other functions like the following. So if you have the sign here. And if you put the sign everywhere, okay, if you put the sign, okay, not good to put the sign everywhere. Some Somewhere you need to put something else. Okay, let's put plus here. Okay, good. Let's see. Something's going to be different. Okay, now... Pekalelo, I want to deal with you a little bit more. You'll forgive me because I know that you are learning this for the first time, but I know that Senulo has a lot of experience when it comes to dealing with these things. Um, so I'm trying to give Pekalelo like a chance to lift off and to learn and sort of like understand this. Right, Pekalelo, in which quadrant do you think is 270 degrees plus theta? In which quadrant is 270 degrees plus theta in this cast diagram? The fourth quadrant. Good. Now, 270 degrees plus theta is in the fourth quadrant. 270 degrees plus theta is in the fourth quadrant. What function is positive in the fourth quadrant? Cos theta. This cosine theta, so that the sine is negative. But now, the cocoa rule applies because we have 270. If you have 270 or 90, okay, so... What is the co-function of sine? It changes, sine changes to what according to the cocoa rule? Because now you, the cocoa rule will tell you that sine has no co. If there's no co, you put on the co and sine becomes what? Yes. It becomes cosine. It becomes cosine. It becomes cosine. Sine becomes cosine because the cocoa rule say if there's no co, put on the curl and becomes cosine and we normally write only cos theta, like this. Right, next question. Okay, I'm trying to get Pechalelo to master this with these last uh, few questions and then we're gonna like do a lot of exam questions. Like 360 degrees minus theta, in which quadrant is 360 degrees minus theta? Pechalelo? It is in the fourth quadrant. Well done. And the fourth quadrant is only cosine that is positive, and therefore the sine is going to be negative. Okay? And therefore, what do we write? What else do we write here to write the full answer, a complete answer? What do we write, Pekhalelo? Sine theta. You write sine theta. Well done. Sine theta. And then now, okay, I know that it's becoming easy and they're very boring and it's easy, but yeah, we're going to be doing like lots of trig. Right now, 180 degrees minus theta. In which quadrant is 180 degrees minus theta? Pekhalelo, what do you think? 
the second quadrant. One hundred degrees non theta is in the second quadrant. Well done. Okay, second quadrant, and the only function positive there is the sine theta. So, and the examiner is having sine here, and therefore the answer is going to be positive. And therefore, what else do we write? Sine theta. Sine theta. Well then, okay, you see, becoming a superstar, getting 100% in the math exam. Okay, now let's look at this one now. In each quadrant is 180 degrees plus theta. What do you think, Becca, 180 degrees plus theta in each quadrant is it? The third quadrant. Well then, well then, it's in the third quadrant, and the only function positive is the tangent of theta, and therefore the sine is going to be a big negative. And what else do we write? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Theater. The sine theta, the sine theta. Okay, number five is a little bit tricky. It has a 270, it has cocoa rule in it. Okay. What is going to be the answer to number five? It's tricky. It has some cocoa in it. It has cocoa rule in it because it has 270. So what answer are we going to have to number five? Okay, first question first is to say, the first question is to say, in which quadrant is 270 degrees minus theta? In which quadrant is 270 degrees minus theta, Pajarello? The third quadrant. Well done, the third quadrant. You see, I'm trying I'm trying to get Pajarello involved and I can see that you've already mastered this trick and now, the most uh, interesting things will be the exams, and the exams are coming thick and fast. The past exam questions are coming thick and fast. So 270 degrees minus theta is in the third quadrant, and the tangent is the one that is uh, sitting there in the, in the third quadrant, and the only one that is positive, and therefore the sign is going to be a negative. And then what else do we write, Pekanello? Is it going to be... Going to be the cosine. Cosine theta because of the cofunction change at 270 because of the cocoa rule. Sine has no co. The cocoa rule says if there's no co and there is 270, put on the co, put on the co, and it becomes cosine with the negative. Okay. Right. Let's get some, let's get cracking with more exams. Let's get more examples. Questions that are very interesting. Um, okay, let's get more exam questions, and we're going to have lots of them. Let me, let's get cracking. I have lots of exam questions. Let's get cracking with these ones and get the mind learning and get more excited and master the exam questions and now get 100 full marks in the exam. Full marks in the exam. So we are preparing for the exam. Want to make sure that by the time the exam comes, we leave no opportunity to chance and we scoop all the marks. We scoop full marks, 100% mathematics exam. So. We are really good. And we're getting ourselves very prepared. So let us look at these particular questions here. Here's a question that says simplify. Right. This is a big question. So it needs a lot of energy. So please make sure that you... You fuel yourself. Make sure that you fuel yourself. You need to simplify these when you have the sine of 90 degrees plus x times cosine squared of 90 degrees minus x. And you divide by the following.
We divide by the following. Cosine of 180 degrees minus x. The sine of One hundred and eighty degrees minus x. The tangent of one hundred and eighty degrees plus x. The cosine of minus x plus three hundred and sixty degrees. Right, let us simplify this and the answer is gonna be in yellow. In which quadrant is 90 plus X? 90 plus is in the, 90 plus theta is in the second quadrant and only the sign is positive in the second quadrant. So, 90 plus is in the second quadrant, only the sign is positive, so the answer is gonna be positive. But what are we going to write? What is it going to be? Because now the COCO rule applies here where you have the sine of 90 plus. What is the answer to this? Just the sine of 90 plus X. What's the answer? So in the end, we can see that um, 90 plus is actually in the 90 plus x is in the second quadrant where the sign is the only one positive, so the answer is going to be positive. But the COCO rule applies, meaning it's going to be positive, but it's going to change to the cosine of x. Right. 90 degrees minus x in each quadrant is 90 degrees minus x. 90 degrees minus theta is in the first quadrant where everything is positive. So the answer is going to be positive, but there is... Is your but it's going to be positive, but there is a the COCO rule applies because of the 90 degrees. What answer is it going to become there? Cosine squared 90 degrees minus x. What does it become in the first quadrant? 90 degrees minus is in the first quadrant. So, because of the COCO rule, the COCO rule says that if there's 90 degrees, remove the co in the word cosine. In the word cosine, if you remove the co, you are left with sine, and that becomes the sine squared of x. The denominator, 180 degrees minus x in each quadrant is it? 180 degrees minus theta is in the second quadrant, and the sine is the only one positive there in the second quadrant, and therefore, the cosine there is going to be negative in the second quadrant. It's going to be negative. Cosine x. Put in some parentheses like this. 180 degrees minus x, we've already seen, is in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, the sun is the only one positive. So this is going to be the sine of x. 180 degrees plus x. 180 degrees plus x. 180 degrees plus theta is in the third quadrant, and in the third quadrant, the tangent is the only one that is positive. Only one that is positive, so let's check what function we have. Right, so the tangent is the only one that's positive, and we have the tangent, so it's going to be the tangent of x. 360 minus x. You see the fourth quadrant? In the fourth quadrant, what do we have? We have that the fourth quadrant is only the cosine. 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, only the cosine is positive according to the cast rule. So in other words, this is going to be positive cosine x. Okay. What is all these? This one cancels this. Side x 
cancels one of the signs in the numerator, leaving sign x in the numerator, and the denominator is going to have the tangent of x and cosine, and the tangent of x is sine x, cosine x, cosine x. Cosine cancels cosine, and we're left with the sine cancels the sine, and the result is a one that is negative because there's going to be a negative that is in the numer in the denominator here. It's negative that's in the denominator. Cosine cancels cosine, but it's a negative, so yeah, there's going to be a negative one, and that is the answer. So think about this and make sure you sort of understand this because our another question is loading, but very thick and fast. Very thick and fast. But I want us to remember our old friends, the special angles in trigonometry, because these are very important. So now let's recall the special angles. So here's a question that says simplify. One hundred degrees. Ten squared of two to five. Ten thirty. Cosine three seventy. the sign of 120. Right, you need to simplify this, but on the side, I want to mention the special angles. What are they? 30. 45 degrees and 60 degrees. So 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Square root of two, one. But there's another forty five degrees. Which is a square root of two, one, one. All right? I'm gonna write the answer in white. Okay, right, the question is in yellow. All right, so if you have this, what do we do next? Okay, we're gonna play around with this and get um, the answer once or we're good. Okay, what do we do here to simplify this? 100 degrees, what do we do with this? So, well, there are many ways to do this. One of the ways we can say it is the 100 can be seen as 90 degrees plus 10. 9 degrees plus 10 degrees is going to give us 100 degrees. The tangent of 180 degrees, tangent squared of 180 degrees plus 45. Okay, so we also have 1030. Can leave that one for now. It's nice and acute. We just need the special angles. So just reducing the bigger, the larger angles. Like 370, you can reduce it because we can write 360 plus 10. 360 degrees plus 10 is 370. Right, 120 can be reduced in many ways, but I advise the students to use 180 degrees. 
180 degrees minus 60 degrees. So what we get here? So 90 degrees plus theta is in each quadrant. We saw that it is, it is actually in the second quadrant and the second quadrant is only the sign that is positive, but there's a co-function change at 90 degrees by the co-co rule. Right, so you're gonna have a positive answer, but there's no co. The cocoa rule says put on a co, it becomes cosine and we only write cos of 10 degrees. Positive because we are 90 plus in the second quadrant, the sign is positive there. 180 degrees plus theta is, or 180 degrees plus 45, it's gonna be actually in the third quadrant and the tangent um, is the only one that's positive. So this is gonna be positive, giving us the tangent squared of 45 degrees divided by, in the denominator, you have the tangent of 30. 360 plus is in the first quadrant where all functions are positive and therefore the, this one is gonna be positive cosine 10. Um, right, 360 plus is in the first quadrant, but in the first quadrant, all functions are positive. So it's just gonna be positive cosine 10. 180 degrees minus is in the second quadrant and the sign is positive there. Only one that is positive in the second quadrant. So the result is gonna be positive, um, the sign of 60 degrees. <laughs> right, so what do we have? We have cosine 10 multiplied by 10 squared 45. Ten thirty cosine ten sine sixty cosine ten sine sixty. And our old friend of uh, um, of these special angles. Sixty degrees thirty at forty five, the forty five degree special triangle. Okay, this is ninety degrees here. You know, you include the ninety degrees there. Okay, yeah, nine degrees here, nine degrees there. So, but we also have nine degrees, nine degrees. 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Square root of two, one, one. Okay, now the 45 degree triangle is there. Okay, let's get cracking. Cosine 10 cancels like cosine 10. The tangent of 45 is use the socket tower. Right, using the socket tower, the tangent is opposite of adjacent, but looking at the 45 degree triangle. Right, opposite 45, opposite of adjacent, which means it is one over one. So it's like one over one squared, all squared because of the square of the 10. The tangent of 30 degrees, we are looking at the tangent of 30 degrees and the tangent of 30 degrees is the same as what? Right, 10, wherever you see the tangent, then you're dealing with the opposite of the adjacent, 30 degrees, opposite is one, adjacent is the square root of three. Opposite 30 is one, adjacent is the square root of three is one out of the square root of three. Sign 60. This is sine 60, opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite of hypotenuse sine 60, opposite of hypotenuse square root of three over two. Okay.
So which means one divided by one out of two. So one divided by one half is two. One divided by one half is two. And that is the answer to this problem here. What was the problem? Well, this was the question in yellow. We had to simplify that expression. And we wrote a couple of steps that seek to help us simplify that expression. Many times uh, we or we encounter a lot of problems like this and uh, we need to be very prepared to play around and solve more problems. Let's practice more with these problems. More trigonometry. At this point, we are interested in saying if the sign of 32 degrees equals K, determine the following. Determine the following in terms of K. Determine the following in terms of K. In terms of K. Right, number one, cosine 58 degrees. Number two, the sine of 212 degrees. Number three, the tangent of 32 degrees. Okay, let's look at this. Um, what do we do here? So I'm gonna consider the diagram here. 32 degrees is an angle that is somewhere here. Thirty-two degrees. So at this point, this is Soka Tower. And therefore, the side of 32 is like opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite of hypotenuse. And therefore, this is like R, A, this is like Y, you're interested in this one, which is like X. So how do we get the X here? Right, to get the X there, let us use um, a result. Pythagoras theorem. Pythagorean relation. X squared plus Y squared is R squared. So you come here. One, the y is k squared, x squared. X is one minus k squared, one minus k squared. Okay, obviously, ordinarily here, you're gonna have a plus or minus. Okay, I must indicate that when you're solving this equation, when x squared plus k squared is equal to one and you have to find the x, so you're gonna have that um, x is plus or minus, but because you are in the first quadrant here and x is positive, so you're gonna take only the positive. Okay, if this one is 32 degrees, this one is 90 degrees in the triangle, we are putting the 32 degrees that appears here, the two degrees appears there. Now, this angle here must be 58 degrees because this one is 58 degrees. It's exactly 58 degrees because if you add 50 plus 30 is 
80 and then 90. Okay, uh, the triangle, the angles here must add up to 180 degrees. Supplementary angles in a triangle. Okay, right. So with that said, we are in a position to just complete this with ease. Like cosine 58. Okay, there's 58 here already. So you can use Sokatoa. You can use Sokatoa so that uh, when you have the cosine, then it's adjacent of hypotenuse. Dealing with 58 degrees, adjacent of hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse. 58, adjacent is K, hypotenuse is one. K over one. And the answer is exactly K. All right, so that answer, that is the answer we're getting. But there are many ways to do it. Another student can come and say, this is the same as cosine 958 uh, is the same as 90 degrees minus 32. Let's check this one. 90 minus 30 is 60, and then you are. So you can say 58 is 90 minus 32. In which quadrant is 90 minus is in the first quadrant where everything is positive, but it's a co-function change at 90 degrees by the COCO rule. Positive everything in the first quadrant, 90 minus, but there's a cocoa rule, which means you have the sine of 32 degrees in the sine of 32 is K. So in other words, I mean, there are many ways to kill a cat here. The cosine 58 is K. There are just too many ways to do the question. Okay, let's look at the sine of 212. The sine of 212 can be seen as 180 degrees plus 32 degrees. 180 degrees plus 32 degrees. In this quadrant is 180 plus. The third where the sign is negative, but the 10 is positive in the third quadrant. So the sign becomes negative, the sign of 32. Sign 32 is K, and this becomes minus K. Okay, to learn from these, you need to repeat these questions. You need to watch the video, make sure you understand. Cover the solution and see if you can solve the question on your own. Okay, that is how you learn mathematics. You will repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat the problems. and Make sure you can do it, you can do it, you can do it again and again and again and again. Okay, let's look at the tangent of 32. 32 already appears here. Okay, 32 already appears here in the triangle, but we're using uh, Sokatoa, so Toa at uh, opposite of adjacent tangent is opposite of adjacent 32. Opposite 32 is K, adjacent is the square root. So that becomes K over the square root. One minus K squared. Okay, this is the answer. I feel like we're trying to do something this afternoon. And now we're taking a short break. And now taking a short break, we can be right back again. Maybe today we're enough. Maybe today I can give you a little bit of time to relax. And then tomorrow, okay, I can meet you again tomorrow, but yeah. It's not exam time that we can use a lot of the nights. You you have other subjects to focus on. Some of you, you have history, you have geography. So, you know, you have other things to focus on. So let me not keep you awake till late. You are going to school. You're going to struggle to wake up in the morning. Okay, right. Okay. So I'm gonna send you messages on WhatsApp, but yeah, we can learn, we can meet at 7 p.m. We can meet at 7. 7 p.m. If you guys are okay with that, or 8 p.m. The best is 8 p.m. Yeah, but I think that most of you can manage 8 p.m. well because by 7 you are still in the street, you are still buying bread from the shop for the next day. So I think that 8 p.m. is okay. 
So if we meet tomorrow at 8 p.m., we're going to like do more questions on what is currently happening in school now. Um, I'm going to bring more topics than this and we're going to practice more, but also more past exams, please, are going to be featuring our discussion tomorrow. So tomorrow at 8 p.m., we're going to be cracking more problems. So yeah, you can, you can, you can join me tomorrow. 8 p.m. is fair enough. Something is still a bit early, I think. Some of you are still cooking so by eight you are settled you have taken your dinner so right i think this is good enough i feel like doing more but i know very well that it's not going to be very helpful if i break your back it's not it's not the end of time it's not the end of time it's still you still have lots and lots of time but i must give you a small exercise to a small exercise sort of sort of practice it's not fair to just Teach and teach and teach and teach and not and not give anything extra so that during your own leisure you can exercise your muscles, see if you fit enough. So I'm gonna yeah, I'm I'm gonna be just uh, putting um um a, a problem here for you to to try. So Stay put and stay tuned. Stay put and stay tuned. I'm loading one problem. Right. Here is the question. So if. So what am I doing now? What I'm giving here is a home activity for you. It's a home activity. If, right, if the If the tangent of 27 degrees equals P, express each of the following each of the following in terms of P. Twenty seven degrees, number two, number three, okay, sixty three. So this one here is. Sign of sixty three. Number four, the tangent of 153. Number five, the tangent of minus 27 degrees. Number six, cosine squared of 387. Well, three, eight, seven. So this is the answer. Uh, this is rather a home activity. So please consider this home activity and make sure you sort of understand what's happening here because it's so good for you to practice and you get these problems during your own leisure. You practice this and these problems are so good. Uh, this particular home activity is what you meet at grade 11, what you meet at matric. So yeah, it's good both grade 11 and matric. And you use exactly the same approach like we did here. 
uh, 32 degrees is in the first quadrant. That's why this was, was done here. Obviously, we always bear in mind this is zero degrees. Um, this one is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees. This is 360 degrees. So even here, you would basically obviously do the same to 27 degrees is like in the first quadrant. So you do the same. Okay. Right. I must thank you guys for joining us tomorrow at 8 p.m. We're going to meet again. I'm going to send you a timetable on, on the thing on WhatsApp. So the timetable we're going to be following. We need to gear up our commitment towards math and science mastery. Math and science mastery. But I think for today is pretty enough. And I'm going to send you a timetable. And here's the home activity for you to try to during your own leisure. Yeah, I'm gonna give corrections to these. Can give corrections to these, but yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Okay, the classes at 8 p.m. and the class I suggest they are just there to keep you busy. Um, our main session is Saturday 4 p.m. But during the week, I throw in sometimes. If you are busy at those times, you are welcome to. Stay away if you are doing athletics, so you are in the field of play, you are practicing soccer, etc. You can stay away, but if you're free at the extra times that I'm going to throw in during the week, you can just join us for us to practice more. But our main meetings meeting time is Saturday, 4 p.m. But yeah, thanks everybody and goodbye to you. Goodbye, guys. Bye.